Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. It's November folks, and I will be following a tradition I started last November when I used my YouTube channel to promote awareness of men's health through the Movember campaign. Throughout November, men are growing mustaches to raise awareness and fundraise for men's health, including prostate and testicular cancer, as well as men's mental health and suicide prevention. If you already have a mustache, you can grow a beard, which is what I chose to do. So if you'll excuse me for a moment, I'll nip off and shave this beard to officially start my Movember fundraiser. And I'm back and ready to start getting shaggy for December. You'll find a link in the description below that will take you to my Movember fundraising website where you can donate directly. At the end of November, I will donate all of the funds I receive from my channel memberships to the campaign. Last year, I raised $215 with six donors in addition to my membership revenue contribution. Please give generously and don't forget to check your nuts. But now I can see your nuts. I thank you. Thank you in advance for your support. And on to today's fountain pen review. I've often been asked why I don't review more expensive fountain pens like Mont Blanc, Montegrappa, Aurora, and high-end Leonardo's. The simple answer is, I can't afford them. We have no money for food. <laughs> We're poor. A Mont Blanc 149 is currently $1,220 Canadian at my local pen shop. I can't even afford to have them unlock the glass case to look at one. And being independent, Goulet and Applebaum don't send me $1,000 fountain pens to review every week. However, the next best thing to being able to afford a $1,000 fountain pen is befriending someone who can. And my someone is Nibmeister Jack Hernandez. And today, Jack has generously loaned me this uber gorgeous, limited edition Leonardo Momento Zero Grande Corsani in blue abyss celluloid. And forget it if you think you can get one of these. Even if you had the money, you can't, because not only was the pen limited to 48 pieces, this one is unique, as it's the prototype, given the number zero of 48, and the only one with a 14 karat rose gold elastic nib and red ebonite feed, and it was made specially for Jack. So you could say this is a Leonardo Memento zero zero. So join me as I compare this one-of-a-kind Leonardo with my 80 of 100 Memento zero Jonathan Brooks right now. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. Plus, I want to do a side-by-side -side comparison of an ordinary Momento Zero Grande well, not so ordinary, and compare it to this Momento Zero Grande Corsani. The pens were designed by Salvatore Matrone, owner and chief designer of Leonardo, in collaboration with Stefano Centore, the owner and proprietor of Stilografica Corsani in Rome, Italy. Salvatore made 49 pens for the 48 pen limited edition Leonardo Momento Zero Grande Corsani in blue abyss celluloid. The series came out in late 2019. This zero of 48 pens was a prototype for the series and made specifically for Jack. It differs from all the others in the series because it has rose gold trim and a red ebonite feed instead of the rhodium trim and blue ebonite feed of the series. Overall, the pen is slightly smaller than the standard size Momento Zero Grande represented here by my 80 of 100 Momento Zero Grande Dutch Pen Show 2021 Jonathan Brooks Earth Magic 2. The other visual difference is the lack of a cap band and a blind cap on the Corsani. And the Corsani doesn't have a blind cap because it is a captured converter. There's only one single gold ring separating the section from the barrel on the Corsani. And instead of a cap band, it has a single inset gold medallion with the Leonardo Wings logo on it. And the Brooks is turned acrylic where the Corsani is turned celluloid. And this Blue Abyss celluloid is truly amazing. Just look at those turquoise and silver bands of chateauancy. 
and the deep black bands. From the top, we see the typical Leonardo conical finial, and then the cap curves up to the standard Leonardo roller style clip, this one in gold plating. And the limited edition engraving is very subtle here on the back of the cap, 00 of 48. And there's that gold embedded medallion with the Leonardo logo on it on the front. Then we have the gold plated ring at the top of the barrel, which tapers down with no interruption to the bottom conical finial. I must say Stefano is correct when he says the Blue Abyss celluloid shows off all of its magnificence by virtue of its absence of rings. The very elegant look and the barrel is deeply engraved with Corsani Dal 1924 which means since 1924 in Italian and Abyss in script. The cap unscrews with just about one turn to reveal the two-step milk bottle section, which I've come to love, topped by a rose gold band, and then the number six size 14 karat rose gold fine elastic nib and red ebonite feet. I mentioned the series actually has a rhodium plated 14 karat gold nib and blue ebonite feet, but I agree with the choice of pairing a red feed with the rose gold hardware. Let's get a closer look at this nib. It is a Leonardo elastic nib with cutouts on either side to give the nib more flexibility. And it has the Leonardo wings, Leonardo elastic 14K, 585, and F for fine. The wings, Leonardo and elastic are laser etched, whereas the 14K, 585, and the F are deeply etched or stamped or roll stamped into that nib. The barrel unscrews to reveal the large Leonardo captured converter, which is permanently affixed to the section. Leonardo calls this a piston, but it's essentially a large capacity captured converter. I've seen this kind of filling system before, most recently with the Canwright Legacy in Ebonite. And here is that pen. And you open it up and you can see the large captured converter, uh, but this one actually unscrews from the section. I don't want to unscrew it because already it stinks to high heaven. Cool. And I'll put this back in the dead pen drawer when I'm done with it. Get out! The Leonardo piston knob is rose gold plated as well. Has the Leonardo wings, Leonardo Officina Italiana, laser etched as well as a really pleasant uh, Greek key pattern all the way around. And the capacity is very generous at 1.5 milliliters. The nib and the feed are friction fit and not part of a nib assembly that can be unscrewed. The inside of the cap shows a ledge milled into it that meets up with the section to seal the nib from evaporation. The cap posts deeply and securely and even though it makes for a long pen it is nicely balanced. Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough to write with comfortably. The original price on this 2019 limited edition pen ranged from 690 to 730 euros, depending on your choices. But this is the prototype, so only Jack and Salvatore know the price. Before we look at some size comparisons, let's look at the comparison between the Corsani Momento Zero, the Momento Zero Grande, and a regular sized Momento Zero, this one here in the blue Hawaii. I'm going to put the Corsani between the Momento Zero and the Momento Zero Grande. The Corsani doesn't sit exactly midway in size between a Momento Zero and a Momento Zero Grande. It's just slightly smaller in length uh, than the Momento Zero Grande. It has a slight reduction in length and a tiny reduction in the taper of the barrel. And I had to get out my calipers to check those details weren't just my imagination. The Corsani is definitely shorter and the barrel tapers a little bit more, but the sections and the caps are identical, except for the fact that the regular Grande cap has this little extra skirt on it here that makes it that much longer. And surprisingly, the Corsani, even though it's a little shorter and a little more svelte, is 2.8 grams heavier. That must be the metal knob on the captured converter inside this pen. I should mention that both the captured converter of the Corsani and the Momento Zero Grande's piston have exactly the same capacity at 1.5 milliliters. 
Now let's look at some size comparisons. Here is a Leonardo Momento Zero Grande Corsani Blue Abyss Celluloid with a Leonardo Momento Zero Grande Jonathan Brooks Earth Magic 2, a Laban 325 in Blue Ocean, a Canrite Legacy in Ebonite, and then the Nakaya Decapod Custom Urushi. You'll be seeing this Nakaya next week. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted with the exception of the Nakaya. Because it is Urushi lacquer, although the pen will post, it isn't recommended. And the Canrite can't post. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. You see they're all plenty long enough to write with unposted. The Leonardo's and the Nakaya are 14 karat gold, where the Laban and the Canrite are steel. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the 2019 Leonardo Momento Zero Grande Corsani and it has a fine 14 karat gold elastic nib. Let's check the wetness. The pen is very, very wet and the nib is ultra smooth. But of course, what we want to know from an elastic nib is how flexible is it? and especially under normal pressure. So this is no pressure at all. And this is just with a little bit of pressure. You can see that the nib is delightfully flexible. It's not a flex nib, but it has a lot of bounce. So for ordinary writing, you get a lot of line character out of it without any effort at all. I must say that I'm delighted with the easy flexibility of this nib. I mean, I'm no flex writer or calligrapher, but I do appreciate a nib that will allow a little bounce with normal pressure. This isn't a vintage wet noodle of a nib like this 1920s Waterman. I mean, that is lots of flexibility right there. And you'll be seeing the restoration of this pen in my Pen Restoration Sunday video tomorrow. But it is close and very, very pleasant to write with. And I'm doubly pleased that the Leonardo Gold Elastic Nib is so nice because it is a contrast to the Leonardo Steel Elastic Nib, which I purchased with my Leonardo Magico and reviewed a while back. Here it is on my Leonardo Salt. It's very, very wet, but it requires a good amount of pressure uh, to get line variation out of it. Tom at Gold Spot Pens did a comparison between the Leonardo Steel and Gold. Yeah. Well, that was a good lunch. So Tom at Gold Spot Pens did a comparison between the Leonardo Steel and gold versions of the elastic nibs and found out through some scientific experimentation that the steel version needs 50% more pressure to flex the same amount as the gold. I agree with that. I'll put a link to that video and article in the description as it is fascinating stuff. The steel elastic has some nice bounce for a steel nib and is plenty wet so not too bad for around $23. The 14 karat gold elastic nib I'm sure is a little pricier but I have no idea since I've never seen one for sale individually. You can get them on grande sized Leonardo's as a roughly $200 upgrade. And the ink today is I have no clue by 
Jack wouldn't tell me. But it's a rich, delightful, if enigmatic ink, which has incredible shading from light turquoise to deep cobalt blue and some rich red shading. It's a perfect match for this beautiful blue celluloid. And this nib makes a 0 0.3 millimeter line with no pressure. And it goes up to a full one millimeter when flexed. And that makes it a Western extra extra fine or a Japanese extra fine and the one millimeter line is a Western double broad or a Japanese just completely off the charts and that's my Richard Bender line width chart which you can find a link to in the description and for our quote And some reverse writing. It actually does very nicely. Very thin, a little bit scratchier. And for some quick writing. No issues whatsoever. Delightfully wet pen. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, I'm really not going to evaluate this pen because it's a one of a kind and even the series which was limited to only 48 pens is so rare that evaluations like this are meaningless to a typical consumer but i will just say that i have no negatives at all to say about this pen if this were a production model available by the thousands i would recommend getting one even if you needed to sell 10 pens to make the down payment some of these rare one-of-a-kind pens tend to be in collections for show and not for use. This pen was made to be used and I'm pleased that Jack loaned it to me full of mysterious blue ink. It means that he's writing with it even if he can't remember what the ink is. The beauty of the pen is obvious and I love the understated elegance of the pen without its usual adornments. And there you have it. If you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I'm now an affiliate of the online store. And when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I will answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you. And that's all she wrote.